This is CPM Pre-Calculus Chapter 3, Number 77. So here we're asked to find the area of the triangle here shown at the right. So we know that the area of a triangle is just equal to 1 half base times height, right? We know that looking at this triangle, um, here is the height. If 15 centimeters here is the base, right? The height is the altitude formed making a right angle at this point with the base right so here's the height so we know this is equal to one half times 15 centimeters times the height let's even label that as the height so the rest of this problem really is going to be well what is the height right this is the crux of the problem if we can find the height plugging it in to the formula is so simple we can use our calculator and will be done. So let's go ahead and first label this triangle. I'm going to label it triangle A, B, C, and then that's going to correspond with this is side B, side little c, side little a, right? So we have a, a triangle here. Um, we know angle A is 36 degrees. We know angle C is 25 degrees. Well, do we know angle B? Well, yes we do. We can figure that out because the sum of all three angles in a triangle always equals to 180 degrees. So angle A plus angle B plus angle C is 180. So that's 36 degrees plus angle B plus angle C, which is 25, equals to 180. So angle B is equal to 180 minus 36 minus 25. Okay, we can do that in our calculator. 180 minus 36 minus 25, that's equal to 119 degrees. Okay, so I can even write that here in my triangle, that's 119 degrees. So why am I finding this out? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that really quickly because how can I find the height of this triangle? Okay, so I, I know, I now know that the three angles, right, I know 36, 119, and 25. I know the base is 15. I don't know the height, and I don't know these two as well. But let's talk about strategy. One strategy I have is if this is a right angle right here, I can go ahead and look at this triangle here alone, the small one in green, shaded here. That is a right triangle, right? Therefore, if I take, for example, sine of 36 degrees, I know sine is um, a trigonometric function with the property of it's equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So if I know sine of 36 degrees is equal to h over c, if I know c, then I could find h. Likewise, I can go ahead and say, well, sine of 100, excuse me, Sine of 25 degrees is equal to h over a, so therefore if I know a, I can find h easily. So I need to find finding side c or a will get me the height, right? So my strategy is to find side c or side a to get the height. So how can I do that? Well, I can find um, side C or A using um, the law of sines, right? I can also use the law of cosines, but that's going to be a little bit more difficult um, because I only know one side, right? Um, so I will, I will need to use law of sines to get one of the other sides before I can go ahead and jump in and um, use the law of cosines. So the law of sines basically says sine of the angle A over the side A. This ratio is equal to sine of the other angles over their corresponding opposite sides, right? And what do I know already? I know B, angle B and side B. So I can even say I know this. So if I know one of these, I can find the final missing information and I know um, angle C and angle A 
So I can I can go ahead and do this either way. I can find side C or side A. So let's go ahead and find um, side A by looking at sine of angle A over A. So angle A, right, is 36 degrees. So let me go ahead and pull this one in, and I know this one in. So I know sine of angle A is 36 degrees over A is equal to, and I'm going to pull sine B. B, we just found out, was 119 degrees. Sine of 119 degrees over side B. Well, that's given to us as 15 centimeters. Right? So then I can go ahead and solve for A. To do that, I need to get it out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by A. Right? That's going to cancel it here because this is over 1. So I'm going to have sine of 36 degrees equals to sine of 119 degrees over 15 times A. Right? Now I'm trying to get A alone. So to get A alone, I'm multiplying by A now. So let me go ahead and divide both sides by sine of 119 over 15. Divide both sides by sine of 119 over 15. These cancel out, and I'm left with A is equal to sine of 36 degrees divided by the fraction sine of 119 divided by 15. So this is a little fraction in the denominator. I can plug that in my calculator. Make sure your calculator is in degrees mode because we're doing degrees, not radians. And A is equal to sine of 36 degrees divided by, and I'm going to put this in parentheses because they're both in, deno in the denominator, this fraction, sine of 119, close the parentheses for sine, divided by 15, close the parentheses for the denominator. So I'm left with A, side A is equal to 10.08069989. And I could round this, but I'm not going to until I get my final answer. So my final answer is as accurate as I can make it. Okay? So why did I want side A? So again, A I'm going to write here is equal to 10.08069989. And put away the calculator for a second. Because now, again, I can look at splitting this here with the height. And I can go ahead and look at this right triangle here. right? If I create this right triangle, I know sine of, sine of angle C is equal to from SOHCAHTOA. So, KAHTOA. Sine is equal to over H which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is, what's the opposite of this is H over hypotenuse of this triangle, remember, is opposite of the right angle here, which is A. So I can solve for H by multiplying both sides by A. They cancel out here because it's over 1. And I'm left with H on the right side and A times sine of C, remember this is big C, on the left. A I just found was 10.08 something. It's still in my calculator, so I'm going to just leave it like that for now. Times sine of angle C, angle C is given to us is 25 degrees. Equals to H. So let's go ahead and bring out our calculator again. See how it's still there? I'm just going to say times, so it's going to use that times sine of 25 degrees. And that is H. So I'm left with H is equal to 4.260287864. And again, we know the units are centimeters because we're given centimeters for the base. So now that we have H, we can get the area of the triangle, right? Let me go back to blue. It's just 1 half times 15 times this big number here, 4.26 dot 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 dot. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. So it's this number times 15 times 1 half. 
I can put them in any order because multiplication can happen in any order. And I get the area of my triangle is approximately, I'm going to change this to approximately because I'm going to round here, 31.95, and I'm going to say 952, cut off the 15898. And that 1 is below 5, so I'm going to keep it as a 2. And my units for area are always units squared. So centimeters are the units. So centimeters squared. I'm going to box this answer. And this is the area of the triangle, 31.952 centimeters squared. Do not round it to 32. Okay, This is not 32 centimeters squared. We want to get more precision than just go ahead and rounding it to the whole number. So again, 31.952 centimeters squared. And that ends for us CPM Precalculus Chapter 3, Number 77.